Well, turning back to the U.S. now, during his jobs address last night, President Obama said his administration will work with federal housing agencies to help more people refinance their mortgages. Well, my next guest says passing the president's new job plan is critical for the housing industry. Housing and Urban Development Secretary Sean Donovan joins me now from Washington. Uh, Mr. Secretary, welcome to Fast Forward. It's a pleasure to have you. I want to start off with exactly how the jobs plan, how can you connect that right now to homeowners and their dilemma? Well, Lisa, thanks for having me on. There are really two key things the president talked about. One was we still have, when, when there's record low interest rates, close to 4%, we have too many homeowners that are underwater who haven't been able to take advantage of refinancing. There are about uh, almost 900,000 who've participated in our HARP program, or Home Affordable Refinance Program, but there are millions more that could be eligible if we can remove some of those barriers. Uh, as you know, there are fees associated with those loans uh, that can stand in the way. There's risks of putbacks uh, or lawsuits that many servicers are afraid of. There are second mortgages on many of those that stand in the way. So we're working closely under the president's direction last night uh, with the Federal Housing Finance Agency to try to remove some of those barriers and help those uh, folks that are underwater refinance. So does that, though, put us in sort of a precarious situation of a repeat of what got us here in the first place? If underwriting standards were too lax on the part of the banks, uh, if the process by which we sort of package and sell mortgages or mortgage-backed securities to sort of create home ownership was a little bit uh, too greedy, why do this now? Couldn't it put us right back in the same position? Absolutely, absolutely not, Lisa. These are loans that are already on Fannie and Freddie's books, and frankly, this will help to improve the condition for taxpayers uh, as well as for Fannie and Freddie. Uh, right now, for the average family, we're talking about more than $2,000 a year in potential savings given the interest rate differential. So it's not about uh, creating new loans that are risky. This is taking existing loans that are already on the books and making them less risky. That's the key here. And what are the specific barriers at this point that you think would be key to remove? Well, uh, certainly there's this putback back risk that I, that I talked about. You have an existing lender that uh, has made the loan and holds it. For a new lender to come in and refinance it, they're concerned that they don't want to take over uh, any prior risk. That's an issue. Uh, there are fees associated with these loans that stand in the way for a consumer. They may be able to lower their long-term payments, but if they don't have the ability to come up with those fees today, that stands in the way. Uh, so, and then there are these second mortgages that oftentimes getting permission from the second mortgage holder, or if there's private mortgage insurance, getting permission there, they're just structural barriers in terms of the operational uh, difficulties of getting them refinanced that stand in the way. Those are the kinds of things that we're focused on. But, but recognize, Lisa, if we step back, one of the things that's always been a great strength of the American economy is the mobility of our workers, the willingness to pull up roots for a better job in a different town or a different state. Uh, and right now, there are millions of families who can't do that because they're underwater. So this is something that can help our labor mobility, help the economy overall. All right, Secretary Donovan, we have to leave it there, but I do appreciate you joining us here on Fast Forward. That was Secretary Donovan, head of housing and urban development.